It's another Android smartphone battle. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and again, I've got two nice mid to high end devices in my hand, and we're going to do a dog fight to see which one's the best. On one hand, you have the Motorola Droid Razor M. It's available for $99.99 at Verizon Wireless and packs a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU and 8 megapixel camera and more. And then you have HTC One S. Been out for a while, $149.99 at T-Mobile. Of course, you can probably find these cheaper at various online retailers, but also packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU. The bodies are a little bit different, the way that they look are different, and obviously the manufacturers are different, so we've got to figure out which one's going to be the best in the dogfight battle. But first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us free devices that we give to you in our One Paul Bandit game on PhoneDog.com. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices, you'll walk out working. They'll help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, your settings, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go. Let's figure it out. Which one's the best? Droid Razor M, HTC One S. Which offers the best blend of portability and value? We'll find out in the dogfight, which starts right now. Once again, two really hot Android devices on two different carriers, and they're kind of around the same price point, and actually could be at the same price point depending on which carrier or wireless uh, retailer you get it from. This is the Motorola Droid Razor M. It's available as of September 13th on Verizon, so tomorrow for 100 bucks. It's packing a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED advanced display with 540 by 960 pixels, an 8 megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording a Kevlar coated back with a 2000 milliamp hour battery, a front facing camera, and Android 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich or ICS, with Motorola's user interface. Then you have the HTC One S over here, and it's got a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU, so same processor, 4.3 inch QHD display, 540 by 960 pixels, an 8 megapixel camera on the back with HTC's Image Sense technology and a uh, 1080p HD video recording capability on this one as well. It's packing a 1,650 milliamp hour non-removable battery and a beautiful metal build. And then of course you've got this one over here, metal on the front, kind of plastic over here on the sides, and then you've got Kevlar on the back. So build quality wise, both of these are definitely best in class. If you're looking for something that's a nice device, that's durable, and they tend to woo your friends over from their plastic device or perhaps their iPhone, which is a competitor, at least in the glass and metal department. So HTC One S, Motorola Droid Razor, uh, or Motorola Razor M over here as well. $99.99, $149.99 on T-Mobile, though like I said, you can find them in cheaper places. Motorola's user interface particularly interesting because like I've said in the review and in several of the dogfights, Motorola has seen a nice evolution with their user interface. You've seen it go from the Moto Blur days where everything was kind of skinned, very bloaty, hard to see original Android or stock Android, I should say, on top of it in anywhere in the menu. And then you have it now, partially due to the Google acquisition. If you look at it, you'll notice that out of all the industry players, HTC, Samsung, some of the other players in the market, you'll notice that it's the most stock Android look and feel, despite the fact that it still has Motorola's user interface running atop. So you'll see some differences, some changes, but for the most part, if you're looking for a stock Android look and feel, this is gonna be your device. This is running Android 4.0 as well, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich with HTC Sense version four. So one of the later versions of HTC Sense on this device, and we'll see what applications they come with out of the gate. Now you're gonna notice a couple of differences if you're working with Motorola devices now or you've worked with one in the past, you've had one for a couple of years. You may notice some differences between the user interface, not just on yours, but if you looked at one recently, for example, the Motorola Photon Q 4G LTE, you'll notice some minor differences between the, stock, the software versions of Motorola. You'll notice quick settings here. I can easily access that by scrolling over to the left. And then I have seven home screens here. Seven is the maximum I can do on this device. But unfortunately, and this is a minor pet peeve for me, you've got on-screen buttons, which is nice. But for example, I've set my home screen over here in the middle of the pages. So I know I've got three pages on each side, and then I've got my fourth page over here to total seven. The downside is when I hit home, it automatically goes all the way back to the left, shifting all those home screens back. And for somebody like me that's used to having a home screen right in the middle like this, where when I hit home, it brings me back to that, it's a little bit different, kind of hard to get used to. Seven home screens over here as well. Like I said, you can scroll back and forth. And HTC's done a good job of kind of removing some of the unnecessary kind of carousel effects and things like that. You still see the carousel when you move from screen to screen, but you don't get that obnoxious carousel effect when you scroll back and forth as you can see here. So that's kind of nice 
uh, and a nice feature to have. And then of course your applications in here, you'll notice some differences. First of all, notification bar, pretty similar here. Date switched up on both of these devices. And of course you have the T-Mobile network ID over here. And then you have setting shortcuts over here. And then you of course, I apparently have a voicemail on the T-Mobile line. We'll have to read that or listen to that rather when we get done. Then your applications are in here and both of these come with some level of carrier installed bloatware. You'll notice Amazon applications over here, Amazon, Amazon Kindle, Amazon MP3, Vcast apps, Amazon App Store, Audible, you do quite a bit out of the box over here. And then Google Chrome as well, it's the first Motorola device to come without a stock browser. Chrome is what comes out of the gate on the Droid Razor M, and then of course emergency alerts, and you'll see mobile hotspot, my Verizon mobile, you've got Setup Wizard, you got your Smart Actions, which is a Motorola application we'll talk about in part two, and then you have VZ Navigator and Visual Voicemail, as well as Zappos and Viewdini. Now Visual Voicemail, $299 per month from Verizon for that added feature, and then over here, couple of applications as well. You get 411 and more, game base, T-Mobile stuff like T-Mobile Hotspot, more for me, Polaris Office, and then you get T-Mobile My Account, T-Mobile Name ID, T-Mobile TV, Visual Voicemail, and then you get Where's My Water and Zinnia. So a few carrier installed applications on both of these devices, and unfortunately, they can't be removed. Most of the applications can't be removed, so you're stuck with Verizon or T-Mobile applications, depending on which device you go with. Now, to get you do get widgets as well, and you'll see the access to the widgets are a little bit different depending on which device you're working with. You'll notice over here, you've got your apps and your widgets, whereas over here, you have to press and hold on the home screen, kind of like the old Android setup to access HTC's custom widget interface here. So this is not very stock Android. You look at stock Android, you'll notice widgets uh, are often up with the applications up here. And then you'll see Motorola's user interface is added, a favorites button, where you can go over here and select your favorite applications and easily add and remove applications as you see fit. And then you can go back and forth between apps. Now, this is something that Samsung does particularly well, and it's a feature that I like a lot. And of course, it doesn't really apply over here because in your uh, navigation area, in your menu, all you have is apps. Whereas over here with apps and widgets, when I scroll between my apps and I get to the last page of apps, it automatically shifts me over into widgets. I don't like that. I wish it would just scroll back and forth between apps. And then when I hit widgets, back and forth between widgets. But out of the gate here, you know, when it comes to widgets, HTC definitely has a lock on the widgets. You can see here, calendar, and then we'll go over to calendar on this one, for example. And you'll see some stuff. You'll see some stock Motorola calendar widgets like this. And I can come over here and move this around and customize it, make it my own, and I can make it larger or smaller. Over here, you have the stock Android calendar widget, but you also have some great ones by HTC. So I can come over here, for example. Actually, let's do the agenda widget. And let's see if we can find some space on one of these home screens, which I may not. Okay, perfect. The one at the end. And you can see they light up red if I don't have space. And then I can go over to Heron Baker and then just add that like that, and I can customize the size of this as well. This is a new feature in Sense 4. I've kind of blasted HTC over the months and years for making their widgets unable to be customized. Now, you can customize HTC stuff in addition to Android stuff as a result of it being stock and, or being Android 4.0 on both of these devices. So 4G LTE on Verizon over here, HSPA plus 42 megabits per second over here, also known uh, as 4G by T-Mobile. And let's take a look at the browser on both of these devices. 4.3 inch displays, though you'll notice that this is an edge-to-edge -edge display, and it was one of the devices Motorola announced last week in New York. So they're touting this very much as an edge-to-edge -edge display and a nice feature. And you can see when I bring it in close to the display here, forgive the... Uh, the drift issues, the focus issues, you can see that there's very little around the sides of the display as opposed to over here. You do get some plastic, you do get some metal over on the side. So at least when it comes to device size, you'll notice that the 1S feels a little bit larger in the hand despite the fact that it doesn't have any larger of a display. So that's something to keep in mind. So we've got the HTC browser loading up over here, of course. We have uh, Chrome loading up over here so you can see some minor differences. Menu buttons are in the top right-hand corner on both. And then you can see view desktop site. You can enable flash player over here and more. And then you can see your back and forward buttons right here. Looks like we're going to load up phone dog. And you can see new tabs as well. And I like the tab imp implementation on Chrome. You can see I've got my one tab. When I want to add a new one, I can go here and hit a new tab. And it brings it in kind of in a card style where I can shift back and forth and the animations are nice and fast. Now, both of these have 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU. So very fast in the browsing department with little to no lag, as you can see here. Pinch to zoom, very responsive on the uh, Droid Razor M. And then you can see over here as well, very responsive on this device. Portrait landscape transition effects, very fast on both, as you can see. Little to no lag on either one of those devices and very quick and easy to use. And of course, you've got physical buttons down here, capacitive ones, I should say, back, 
home and recent applications. And just to show you recent applications, again, another implementation as a result of HTC Sense over here. I can easily scroll back up and remove them that way, but you'll notice that it's a different look and feel. This is more stock Android in the look and feel department as I can scroll over and just remove these as I see fit and swipe them much like stock Android 4.0 and stock Android 4.1. Over here, recent applications, I've got to swipe them up to get rid of them HTC style.